This is Rating Descending. Where we watch IMDb's worst 250 so you don't have to. My name is Abigail Ward. And I'm Michelle St. Clair. And tonight we watched Food Fight. The evil brand X joins a supermarket that becomes a city after closing time. Let's watch. Here's a question I haven't asked you in a while. Yeah. How are you, Michelle? Ah, uh, well, we are back. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, a piece of. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, look, the best part of my week was that the other night I did get to go see Glass Onion. Yeah, how was that? It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Is it better than Knives Out? Okay, so. I saw some reviews going into it that said it was, and others just saying it was good and stuff. I know it's Ryan Johnson, and it's Daniel Craig again. Is it the same director? It's meant to be, like, the same universe? Well, yeah. Sorry, not the same director. I mean, is it the same character? Yeah, same character. Okay, cool. Which is why I'm still really fucking mad that it's called, technically, Glass Onion colon A Knives Out Mystery. Yeah. Because it should be a Benoit Blanc mystery. Yeah. Why is it a Knives Out Mystery? It purely for marketing, I guess, oh. but that makes me so angry yeah. because I understand that Benoit Blanc doesn't have the name recognition, but also the core audience of it sees Glass Onion well before they see Knives Out. Yeah. And also we don't call, like, that's like saying Death on the Nile, a murder on the Orient Express yeah, mystery. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's gibberish. So, what, do you think it's better than Knives Out? I, I think it's, I think it's different. I think, I, I, I honestly. you a question, Michelle. It's a yes or no answer. I don't want to rank two different pieces what of art. What kind of fucking podcast do you think we're on? I think... All we do is rank and rate. No, we comment on other people having ranked and, and rated things. we rank and rate at the end. Because yeah, we're compromised by the systems. There are no ethical consumption oh, under so IMDb's rating system. Oh, now? <laughs> yeah. Here I am. Fuck you. Here I am, standing above it all. <laughs> And I gaze upon the valley below me of all these movies. But then I, I look back up and it turns out that I'm at the bottom of a much even larger plateau. And there's one big movie staring down at you. Which movie? God movie. Oh. The, mo- the, the movie of gods. The movie it's of... The room. It's the <laughs> Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? I was trying to tell you that I think it's just as good in a different way. Interesting. I think... I still prefer Knives Out for, like, aesthetic preference reasons. Mm. I like New England, dark green and browns like and Jamie the family and Jamie Lee Curtis more than I like Greek Island uh, sunshine. But, but Greek Island is very 1930s mystery because they're always yeah. on vacation in either Greece or Italy. Yeah. Usually there's a boat involved, maybe a train, and then they'll all gather in the room for that final reveal of who the murderer is. It- it once again does the very Ryan Johnson thing of like playing with structure, but yeah. it times it differently than the first one. So I I was like, this is pretty good, but I'm not as sold on it for the first like 45, 50 minutes. Yeah. And then the back half of it fully like not not just was great, but was like enough that I'm like, I I see exactly what it was doing and I, I yeah. don't think it's flawed in the first half now. I just needed the context of it. And the ending was so fucking good. It's we- interesting that mysteries are coming back because mm-hmm. I saw See How They Run, that film with Sam Rockwell and Saoirse Ronan that came out a couple oh, yeah. months ago. Very forgettable, but charming, but forgettable. Like nothing nothing huge. The twist wasn't that great. Um, but I did really like, like I, I think Saoirse ca- like Ronan carried the entire thing. And I remember yeah. leaving thinking like, are we going to start seeing more murder mystery things coming out? And I sure hope enough, so. I, I, mean, I love so. a good murder mystery. I was a fucking Agatha Christie fanatic as a kid. Without spoiling Glass Onion, by the way, I cannot believe the timing of it. When you watch it, you'll be like, how How did he know to have it come out this month? Right. Just incredible thematic tie-in with real life events. Interesting. Really great. Interesting. Now I have to read the news and speculate before I go see Glass Onion. I mean, like, it'll be on Netflix in like a week or whatever. I think by the time this episode comes out, you can just watch it and it's it's great. I'd rather go to the cinema. Yeah. Well, then you have like two more days. 
what? It's, they're going to take it out of the cinemas in two days? Yeah. Didn't it just start showing? Yep. They're doing a Netflix like limited release oh, thing for only one what week. A bummer. I know. That's stupid. It is stupid. You know what I saw the other day? What? Barbarian. Oh, oh I wanted to see that. Was it good? It was. <laughs> Kind of. What a what a like film it person bad. response of like it was good. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but I had a lot of issues with some of the things the director was attempting to do. Okay. I felt like the political message of it was a bit on the nose. Sure. I felt like I hated tonally some things that he did at the end. And also I'm not a big horror movie person. I feel like the first half of the film is so it's, it's immaculate. It's like mm. s- there's so much suspense and tension and you're so afraid. It's the classic like monster in the house kind of thing. Yeah. But the monster itself was really disappointing to me. Okay. And I, th- I felt that a lot of the plot unraveled, particularly in the last 20 minutes. As always, I feel like I watch so many horror films where I'm like, great setup, great setup, great setup, setup. And then it just falls apart. And I'm like, that was unsatisfying. I, I feel like you're really, you you as a film person are really driven by like the script. Yeah. And yeah. horror <laughs> is a real like director's genre. And that's, that. it's the same thing as hereditary. I think like a hereditary it was an interesting setup. The first half of it was just harrowing grief, but I could still kind of wrap my head around what they were doing structurally. And then the second half for me just fell apart, obviously. But, uh, you know, I feel like... Horror films do tend to have like a different kind of structure and they have different limitations and strengths, but it's usually not for me. And the last 20 minutes I was like, I could think of like four different things particularly that I was like, that was the issue, that was the issue, that was the issue, that was the issue that I had. Mm. So it wasn't bad, but I feel like the director was just kind of patting himself on the back throughout the entire thing and I'll say no more. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes me still keen to watch it. Yeah. First half was great. So scary. I was like just clenching mm. like the armrests in the cinema mm. um, and they're really good at tapping into what makes strange men in particular so sinister mm. yeah what kind of scary good scary because like i saw nope and there was a bit where that was so scary but like good scary so that i could still enjoy it and not yeah, just yeah. be like i can't keep doing this it was look it's scary yeah and, like but like it's it's good scary at the same time okay. and there's really good bits of comedic relief from good old Justin Long. Hey! Justin Long comes in halfway through the movie and he's so fucking funny. Wow. He really, yeah, He some of the, the scenes with Justin Long were the highlights as well. But also when he started coming into the plot, that's when it started falling apart for me. So I'll leave it there. Okay. Man, what a strange guy. Great guy. He's a great guy. I just, I couldn't describe him in any way other than going, yeah, he's, he seems nice. Yeah. He's charming. Yeah. You know? Young Justin Long, yeah, he had it going on. He was in everything. He was dating Drew Barrymore. Yeah, he did that have a real had, moment. He had his like life made when he was like twenty. Yeah, it he must was, be hard living after that. <laughs> he was a Mac, and John Hodgman had to be the PC. The reason I can reconcile myself to the fact that I haven't achieved success yet is that I'm like it's still uphill from here. You know, I haven't peaked and I haven't declined. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still making my way there. That's I'll be true. happy if I peak at fifty. That's a good age to peak. <laughs> yeah, well. I guess the uh, the trouble is that you're like waiting for the peak and then you find out that it was actually much lower than you thought. So it's just mm. a very, very slight incline. It's just a plateau. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah. Oh. Oh. The view's shit. Yeah. Okay. How turns out this down? was the peak. I just, oh I did manage to maintain it. It's just, it's not a great view from up here. And also there's no path on the other side. So I've just got to go back the oh, same yeah, way. Yeah. What I is came. this? A mound? The fuck? Wait, in this analogy, does that mean you're de aging until yeah. you're born? Yeah. Whoa. No, I'm just talking about success. Not <laughs> my literal age. <laughs> what? <laughs> you said you have to go back instead yeah. of go down so i have to go back in my career and my success right but that's still a that can still be a, a decline yeah yeah but reversing, reversing is going back in I'm, time but i'm still talking metaphorically about my career not my age what i'm saying is that you're proposing a regular lifetime and then a benjamin button on top of it that's not what i'm proposing <laughs> I think it's too late. It is fully what you're proposing. (laughs) It was a throwaway joke that you took too literally. You're putting words into my fucking mouth. No, no, no. It's it's Helen Haberdashery, and she she ages forwards, then backwards. Helen Haberdashery. (laughs) Instead of Benjamin Button. No, I get it. I get it. Let me explain it. (laughs) Oh, please, again, yeah. Yeah. No, it heightens the joke. Yeah, I think so. It makes it funnier. Susan Scarf. (laughs) Speaking of... No! Funnier. (laughs) This week, we watched... Food fight. <laughs> and holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh my holy God. shit. Holy oh, holy shit. Oh holy. my god. Oh fucking shit. My fuck. fuck. My holy life shit. is changed. Fuck. Oh. 
Holy it's like shit. if fuck if I oh had like God, fuck. watched Holy a bus shit. crash, I oh would say fucking I'll shit. Never oh get it out of my God, head. That was fuck. This was like that. Holy <laughs> shit! I think first though we should ex- bef- bef- like we should explain why we're doing food fight. Nah, no, we should. We should. Um, as we promised them. So we were meant to do another film called Inez Bater. However, Michelle went to extraordinary lengths for for yeah. a long, long time. It wasn't like extraordinary lengths for an afternoon. She tried multiple times, yeah. over multiple days, maybe even weeks. Weeks, because yeah. it's a, it's a tur- it's a film by a Turkish YouTuber that is not readily available anywhere. I couldn't find anywhere I could buy it. I couldn't find anywhere I could uh, download it. I couldn't find anywhere, like, on his channel he referred to it. Even when you could find someone to stream it through a VPN, it still didn't have subtitles. No subtitles. So we we just couldn't watch it. So we thought, why not put in a film that we wish was on the list anyway? Yeah. And watch Food Fight. Well, that's the thing, because Food Fight is... only not on the list by a statistical quirk. It had like, what was it, like 9,800 reviews when we locked off the list? And now it's got 11,000. Yeah. So it's on the list yeah, now. Yeah, it's on the list now. You know. But when we locked it off, it wasn't. Because when I went in today, I was like, hang on, 1.3 stars and 11,000 reviews. It should be on the list. And I went yeah. through to just double check it wasn't. But yeah. It's, it's like in it the bottom just... three or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, now it is. So I'm glad we were able to kind of squish it into the list yeah, in lieu too. of the film that Michelle could not find. This was back in back in the Let's Watch Bad Movie Days, one that I had promised Abby we would watch years ago. Yeah, and <laughs> we never got around to it because Michelle was like, I'll save it because I couldn't make it to the bad movie night that night. Yeah. And we hadn't watched it since then and now we get to watch it we're here we're full circle there's no more podcast after this i'm sorry it was worth the wait oh my god it's so worth the wait it, it was worth its weight <laughs> in gold it just solid gold it is a movie Bleh. i wrote down <sighs> the best way i could try and describe it which is the visuals of a ps1 cutscene with the animation style of when you clip through the floor in skyrim and freak out yeah and it has a huge obsession with puns Ethnic caricatures and flips. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and sexual innuendo. And sexual innuendo, yeah. There's a lot of cat calling. There's a lot of cat <laughs> calling. There's a lot of misogyny. <laughs> oh, yeah. This <laughs> For movie a kids film, there's a lot women. of sexual jokes <laughs> and misogyny. So, it's so sexual. Because it is meant to be a kid's film. Is it? Yes. My first thought when watching it was, who is the audience? Is <laughs> this for children for or adults? And trust me, there's a lot of... um. A lot of reviews about yeah. how inappropriate it is for children. In particular, like the romantic interest, because they're all like anthropomorphic animals, but the love interest is just a human woman with fleshy cat ears yeah. with the vacant stare of a lifeless sex doll. Yeah, like, and she... she's so tiny and petite. Yeah. She's almost childlike. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, Dex, I love you, Dex. Everything she has is like You're joyous such a hero. and inspiring. You make me feel so safe. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess we better go take care of him. <laughs> and then the, the femme fatale villain is yeah. like, a woman with the most insane proportions. Yeah. And they really, like, there's even a shot where they linger when she puts her leg up and it's got her crotch on the left and her yeah. leg over the screen. And I was like, this is a kid's film. There's a lot of upskirts in this. Yeah, <laughs> there is. She comes in in, like, a little schoolgirl outfit yeah. with a tie and she's wearing, like, thigh-high stockings. Yeah. You see, like, the back of her thighs <laughs> as she's putting her leg up on his shot. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, my God. Also, like, the characters all <laughs> look like nothing. They look like fucking Play-Doh gone wrong. And yet somehow, again, those two female characters have, like, always look like they're staring off into the middle distance as if they've just been roofied. Like, yeah. it's really concerning. It's really concerning. Now, you're not going to be surprised, but um, we'll talk about it later, of course. But there was... It, this also went through, like a lot of films on this list, production hell. Oh, really? <laughs> the film was basically in production for something akin to 10 years. Oh, my God. Yeah. There is one fact I know about this movie Tell because me. it made me, like, scream when I found it out, which what? was the budget and the box office. That is what compelled you to want to watch it in the first yeah. place. Eons ago when Michelle was like, we've got to watch this film, this is how she pitched it to me. <laughs> she said... This film had a $65 million budget and their return was (laughs) (laughs) $71,000. And I was like, we've got to watch it. That is, that's insane. (laughs) Not even six digits. Oh my God. Remember that time I was like, oh, and what they made was 
Is that four digits? Uh, yeah. Four digits? <laughs> but at least then the budget was five million. Like this yeah. is an order of magnitude. Five million dollars. <laughs> and it made seventy one thousand. And it was a ten year long production. And you can tell because it's what Charlie Sheen, Hilary Duff. It's like the most assembly of people from different points in time of the two thousands. But also like they were all fairly popular around the early two thousands. Yeah. I think Wayne Brady Definitely oh, around the late nineties. Wayne Brady, that's who it was. What did you say before? No, no, no. I, I said Charlie Sheen and Hilary Duff, but I was right. trying to remember who yeah. the other like Wayne Brady played lead was Dan, yeah. Daredevil Dan, Daredevil Dan. And he even at one point sang a song as Daredevil Dan. I could tell. I was like, that's Wayne Brady singing. Uh, he would have insi- I think it would have yeah. been in his contract. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but these people, I was like, they were all relevant precisely when this film yeah. initially went into production. <laughs> yeah. I tried really hard to find out at what point in production was the voice acting done, because. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of shit about this movie, but I was like, was it done in like 2003 and then they went through animation hell or was it done in 2011, 2012? And that's even more bizarre because they're incredibly irrelevant by then. I I couldn't find out. I assumed it must have been early because in the third act, especially half of the dialogue stopped sounding crisp and start sounding as if they'd like restored it from an old hard drive, five generations like... I have a feeling it was distorted. It was recorded years and years and years prior yeah. to release. There's just so much shit about the production. <laughs> and I even went so far as to start scouring through Reddit. And I found a story that was given by one of the animators oh on the film who walked out. <laughs> And good, I had to for cut, them. I had to grab the best two paragraphs because it was a long, long post. Oh my god! But it's um, the morale on set was low. It would have to be all I could think of when watching it. I was like, imagine, I can't imagine being the composer, right? Of like, <laughs> you you get brought on to compose it, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we want this kind of sound, and you're like, okay, let me let me see a cut, and you get sent a cut, and then it starts, and you're like, what the fuck is yeah. this? Yeah. What is? I, no, I can't do anything yeah. for this. I just think I think I should go into some facts about the film and get the overview done so we can really go into it because (laughs) I just, there's a lot I need to tell you. There's so much to go into. (laughs) (laughs) So, also, God, thank you so much for giving me Food Fight. It's an honor (laughs) and a privilege. You're welcome. (laughs) Michelle has bestowed this upon me. (laughs) So, Big red flag. This was directed by Lawrence Kasanoff. Okay. If he sounds unfamiliar, he hasn't done very much. Okay. He did produce the Mortal Kombat films. Oh, okay. Kind the, f- of. the famously bad 90s ones? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He came up with the concept for this as well. So oh. he was, the story was also by Lawrence Kasanoff. Oh, great. And by a fellow um, story writer as well. And I've actually forgotten his name. It was Joshua something. The screenplay was done by four separate people. <laughs> we know what a red flag that is. Yeah. It was Lawrence Kasanoff, Sean Catherick Derrick, Brent Friedman and Rebecca Swanson. So you've got four people working on that script and two people working on the story. And Lawrence is in all of these categories. Yeah. He's got his hands in every pie. A lot of ands, few ampersands. That's the real (laughs) red flag. (laughs) So Lawrence Kasanoff was reportedly very difficult (laughs) and didn't know anything about animation. So after production started on a rocky foot anyway, yeah. apparently production, the production company were calling for, to see the footage and to see what they had done. And in December 2002, Kasanoff reported that hard drives containing most unfinished assets from the film had been stolen. Oh, my God. <laughs> in what he called an act of industrial espionage and an incredibly complex crime. Oh, okay. So that didn't happen then. <laughs> so, so, that I'll def- get to that. so that definitely didn't I'll get happen. To that. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. So uh, another studio tried to steal Food Fight, and it was really complex. Yeah, I guess so that didn't happen. <laughs> An investigation, which included the United States Secret Service, was what? was unable to find traces of the thief. <laughs> A Reddit user claiming to have worked on the film Mm. stated that the film's hard drives were not stolen, but rather deleted intentionally by Kasanoff. This is the excerpt that I found from that Reddit user. And I'm going to, this is, this is what he wrote verbatim. 
If you've heard about the development hell that Food Fight went through, you've heard about how the hard drives containing the original footage were stolen. The weeks leading up to the theft were tense. Larry was getting a lot of requests from our mystery investor that we couldn't execute. You know how I explained to you how 3D models work at the beginning of that story? Well, you officially now know more about it than Larry Kasanoff did. (laughs) He couldn't understand why someone like me who made skins for the models couldn't animate. When I told him I was only really qualified to rig up models and maybe script a little bit, he broke down crying. (laughs) We were missing deadlines. People were calling in sick and then never coming back. The investors sent a representative, a guy in a gray suit who always wore sunglasses and never said a word. Anywhere Larry went, he would be standing silently watching you from behind those black lenses. What? (laughs) There are some that say there was no theft at all, that the footage was deliberately lost or hidden away somewhere. I just pray it never gets released. None of us saw more than a small chunk of footage, mostly animators looking back over their own work. None of the animators I've kept in touch with know who or how they animated the brand X scenes. (laughs) So it's just so grim and so sad. And this, yeah, this is a person that just had to walk out. And this was 2002. Yeah. It's another 10 years till this thing gets released. it sounds like he like w- had an investor from like the mafia, but like from a different timeline he or something. Like, down crying. He broke down crying. And then, so after this point, the film was supposed to be computer animated with an exaggerated use of squash and stretch to resemble Looney Tunes shorts. Yeah. But after production resumed in two thousand and four. Kasanoff changed it to a style more centered in motion capture, with the result being that he and the animators were speaking two different languages. Yeah, because there's no way you can convince me this was mo because the human body is yeah. incapable of moving yeah. in the way that they moved. <laughs> a release date in 2005 was later announced, but then missed. Another distribution deal was struck in 2007, but nothing came of it. Lionsgate had a negative reaction to the delays. The investors had grown impatient due to the film production company defaulting on its secured promissory note, and the release dates were again not met. In 2011, the film was auctioned for $2.5 million. Oh my god. But that's also nothing. Yeah. (laughs) An animator, Ken Bailey, stated that the film was already ruined. They were just trying to salvage what they could. And then the film went ahead to finish production and release in 2012. 2012? Yeah. Yeah. So so Pixar's Brave came out the same year. Yeah. I was trying to, I was thinking of that as well. I was like, was it Frozen? No, it would have been Brave. And think about how they animated every fine curl in her red head and Brave. And then you've got this film. Even if it came out in 2001, you'd be like, this looks shit. If <laughs> like, this came out in 1994, people would have gone, it looks ugly. Yeah. Like Toy Story looked better. Yeah. Yeah. Toy Story was like smooth and <laughs> Find and it just looked beautiful. This looked the, fucked. The Tekken 2 opening cutscene is beautiful <laughs> compared to this. <laughs> So there's a lot of good cast members in this as well. We've got Charlie Sheen voicing the hero Dex Dog Detective. Uh, uh, We've got Wayne Brady as Daredevil Dan. We've got Hilary Duff as Sunshine Goodness. Yeah, clearly she was given barbiturates to get into the role. (laughs) We've got Eva Longoria as Lady X. That's who it was. Yeah, we've got um, Larry Miller as Vlad Chuckle. Yes. Chuckle. 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 That was one of the ones I'm like, is that fucking Larry Miller? Yeah, and also got- that means he's a he's an all star. What? Why? Because he was in uh, Nanny Professor Two. Meet the Dude, Clubs. Dude, his second appearance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Christopher Lloyd was Mr. Clipboard, and I could tell immediately. Oh, I yeah. was like, that's Doc, 100%. And, but also, I I can't believe how insane Chris Lloyd is in this. Like, yeah. he is out Chris Lloyding himself. He makes him and Roger Rabbit look like an Oscar winning, like, Anthony Hopkins performance. Yeah. <laughs> so. We've got Jerry Stiller as General X. That's who it was. Yeah. We've got Christine Baranski as Hedda Shopper. Yes. We've got Lawrence Kasanoff himself. Oh, wow. Voicing. And this fucking cracked me up because I thought it was the worst, Don't. the worst voice in the entire Don't. film. He did the Cheezel Weasel. Oh. And the Cheezel Weasel. <laughs> there was a bit with the Cheezel Weasel where he's cornered by Dex and he's like looking around and then he sees a train heading for him and he looks at him and he goes, you despise me, don't you? And then he gets hit by the train and it was horrible. Your, your performance is way too good. He's like, you despise me, don't you? Yeah. He's like barely emoting. I rarely write down quotes, but when he said that, that was the first thing I wrote down in this document was just, yeah. you despise me, don't you? Because me too. That was so he hit by a train. He also, 
looks so wet and ha- yeah. his he- body doesn't move and his head uh, moves like a snake. Apparently <laughs> the way that Cheezle Weasel was animated was different to all the other characters <laughs> because all the other characters did try and use motion capture, but he was a traditional squish and stretch. And so it was just, it was a totally different style of animation. He looks different. He does. And then well, this is just something I found in the soundtrack notes of the IMDb page. I'm so glad I found <laughs> wow. this. You know how there's those little beans that are singing songs? Yeah. It's Joe Esposito. What? The guy that sang, you're the best around. What? Nothing ever gonna keep me. Yeah, he did all the music as Joe Esposito Bean. I don't know, dude. That's not even a pun. I know. Uh, those three other writers were not even home by five. They were home by 3 p.m. max. Yeah. <laughs> and also Harvey Fierstein was the fat cat burglar. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Man, you couldn't have said a funnier voice for Jay Kasanoff to have been. <laughs> you despise me, don't There's you? There's another bit where he looks at the... He, like, falls off a ledge and then he pauses in a close-up and looks at the camera and goes... This seems like it's going to end badly for me. Oh, and then falls onto it's the haunting. ground. <laughs> it's haunting. You know, I just started listening to Case File properly. Yeah. And I just listened to a five-part series about the East Area Rapist. And it has a lot of details about the way this man broke into homes and sexually Such assaulted women and killed from people. What we're talking about. Five episodes. I went listened to seven hours of this content. That rested easy with me, but that scene of him saying, you despise me, don't you? Okay, that was worth the Haunting. <laughs> Haunting. Far scarier. Far more disturbing. <laughs> Here's the overview. When night falls at the supermarket Marketropolis, the store product's mascots called Ikes come to life. For icons. I didn't get that until like the third act. I didn't get it at all. Thank you for explaining it. Yeah. Dex, dog detective, is about to propose to his girlfriend, Sunshine, but she goes missing. Six months later, Brand X's range of products enter the scene. The arrival of seductive Lady X, the Brand X detergent Ike, causes a commotion. After Dex's friend Daredevil Dan, a chocolate squirrel, disappears, Dex rescues his friend and rallies the citizens of Marketropolis to fight the armies of Brand X in a massive food fight. Dex rescues Sunshine, who had been held hostage by Lady X, and escapes with the help of Dan. Lady X reveals that she had previously been the hideous Ike of an unsuccessful brand of prunes. Dex and Sunshine defeat her and finally get married. That feels like a generous description of the plot. Yeah. <laughs> it's the <laughs> This feels like such a weird... The world building of this movie is insane. Because yeah. it's, it's like the Toy Story thing. If they come alive, but it's not the food bags. It's not like Sausage Party. It's the mascots yeah. themselves on it. But then it's like, how do you exist in the aisles? You talk about yeah. how the aisles are dangerous, but nothing in the city is sh- showing me where you are it, physically yeah. in our world. They, they so what are you doing? They seem to exist in the aisles in real buildings because they physically exist. But they in can... the store, no one can see them. Yeah. So where's their well, world? Where they, is it? How do you access it? They could potentially be seen. That's why they were worried about crossing the store. But I don't know if they understand because when the baby grabs Chocolate Dan, yeah. uh, Daredevil Dan, the mother is like, oh, you can't have one of those. So I don't know whether they see the mascots or, or the actual yeah. treat. Yeah. It's it's very... It- also, what's Mr. Clean doing there? He's not food. He's the one item that isn't food. But you would find him at like a supermarket. Yeah, but why is he the one thing that's not food? Detergents and toothpaste and stuff. They're like cleaning stuff. I mean, yeah, she is the detergent Ike. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Yeah. This movie is obsessed, by the way, with like the paradigm of being either beautiful or ugly. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, cool. So the whole thing is that she's evil because she's ugly? Yeah. Cool. And I love how like she has to exist on a spectrum of either being incredibly seductive or sexy or incredibly hideous (laughs) and deformed. Like, cool. All of the Brand X people are are hideous and thus morally (laughs) evil. Yeah. Yeah. Great to know. (laughs) And everyone else is beautiful. The, The world's foundational ethos is ugly people are evil <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> also she... this is what i this is what that person mentioned in the reddit thread by the way the yeah. brand x stuff was animated way later and that's oh. why that and that animator was like where did that come from like who did they hire to do that because we didn't do that who the fuck did that <laughs> apparently there's a whole different team and all of the bits were that's why like also 
basically the worst animated sections are everything with the Brand X Mr. Clipboard guy. Yeah. Coming in and talking to Mr. Leonard. But worst animated is is not even like worst animated implies it's animated correctly but poorly. It it is just a visual error of like yeah. it's it's not rendered properly. Yeah, he's just flailing and clipping. Yeah. Like, it's so I feel crazy. like I can see the outline of him <laughs> on the background he's in. It's like someone layered it poorly in front yeah. of the shop. It's just horrible. It's like they tried to render it out. There was a visual bug and Kasanoff was like it works we're pushing no sorry no actually no I take it back his characterization is he looks behind him sees the man in the sunglasses he and then starts goes, sobbing oh yeah it's actually it's fine I think we would just push it to production just this person was like I'm sorry I can't animate I'm just here to put the skins onto the models so yeah. you can do motion capture and he just broke down crying <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he saw in like his in the glint of his eye someone in sunglasses, like the smoking man from X Files, and he's like, "I'm gonna get murdered." Do you reckon that guy followed him home every night? Like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> he looked out of his window and just saw the same car every night while his wife goes, "Honey, come to bed." Oh, I feel this guy. I don't know if I put this in the notes, so I'll mention it now. He was so certain he was on the money with this, and he was pitching it like a new Toy Story, and he said it would be better than Pixar. He said they were going to be the new Pixar. Yeah, because he set up an animation (laughs) studio for this film, and he was like, this is going to be it. This is my dream. It's so tragic because you go to this guy's Wikipedia page and apart from saying he's known for producing Mortal Kombat, he has a whole section. It's like early life or career or biography maybe. And then the next section is food fight. And it's got (laughs) two or three paragraphs detailing how abysmal food fight was and how it ruined his career. So it's it's a tragedy. I don't think this guy was a bad guy, but he sounded incompetent. And I can't wait to tell you some trivia because he was incompetent he makes me think of the the famous like superman producer obsessed with a giant spider fight guy who's that the, the, oh man in the 90s spider-man that was going to be with nicholas cage and kevin smith was writing it he like kept insisting there was going to be a giant spider fight in oh, it really which is apparently like the third or fourth movie he tried that with and then that fell Kill through your darlings, but dude. then a few years later in 99 wild wild west comes out produced by him with a giant mechanical spider dude, fight he got his <laughs> he, way he got it what's wrong with this dude why uh, do you need it so bad i have no idea well That's why did insane. this guy need food fight i don't <laughs> yeah well he he came up with the concept way back in 1997 yeah. this was something he carried around with him for 12 years and it ruined him but it's and he thought it would be the next toy story the next pixar why okay is there anything in the trivia because i understand why their movement is bad yeah. right it's just not finished and i i almost don't want to just begrudge it for not being finished you know you can go and see the work print cunt of cunt the work <laughs> the work print cut of Blade Runner or you can see the theatrical release of Rise of Skywalker yeah. there's plenty of unfinished movies to watch but it, <laughs> why are they always flipping around cuz the like <laughs> when he goes to the computer and then it like a little data stick figure comes out and then is just like doing flips why is that <laughs> i look I will go into a few more details later about what went wrong with the animation. But that person on Reddit, that animator, said that the stuff that came out still looked better than what they'd been working on back in 2001. And he recounted a story about how Larry Lawrence, the director, chucked him into a room to review some footage, just one-on-one, just him in a room. And he said it was... (laughs) I can't get over this. This is insane. He said the footage was so garishly bright and, and confusing he literally vomited. <laughs> he he started feeling sick and he said, let me out. And then when they didn't let him out of the room, he vomited in a corner and Larry went, go home for the day. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. It was vomit and juicy. He made a torture <laughs> film. All the snuff films in the world. <laughs> And it's actually food fight. <laughs> it is truly one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It is. And we got the, like, what we watched was the was better yeah. than, than how it used to be. Apparently, and we should watch this afterwards, when I did some research into this, a lot of research into this, I saw that there was a, rele- a trailer that they made in 2001 mm-hmm. or, or 2002 when they thought they were going to first release it. Mm -hmm. So there's a trailer of that original kind of footage and the way it originally looked 10 years prior to release. Oh my God. We've got to find it. Apparently you can find it on YouTube. It's the old, old, old trailer. Uh, 
We gotta watch we it. We gotta watch it. I yeah. almost want to watch it now. Like, Do you want to see if we can pull right, it up? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the recording. Yeah, that looked that that was insane. It oh looks like there was just less detail on everything. Like the, everything looked yeah, pr- more primitive. It looks smoother. It looks smoother. The colors look brighter, which is both <laughs> uglier, but also because there's less definition, it almost looks less ugly because the <laughs> the real one is so like visually cluttered. Everything looks dirty. <laughs> I will say I've never I've never had a kids film make me vomit. <laughs> So I just, I need to know what scenes he was forced to watch in that room. The fact that he was like, Larry, let me out. <laughs> Larry, let me out. Well, He's because I imagine there's a certain element of it of like, I'm working on this and I'm watching it. It's so ugly. Yeah. And like- <laughs> he said it was just like overwhelming. Like he got overstimulated and he said it was really loud and really bright. And it was yeah. like hurting his eyes and fucking with his like depth perception. He said he just vomited. Yeah. Like... Oh, oh, also, so you did the research on this. Can you tell me what an exobite is? Because they constantly refer to some sort of thing that the the brand X army has called exobites, and they never really explain it, nor do we really visually see it. You're asking too much of me, Michelle. Okay, (laughs) great. (laughs) I'll look it up, but I I couldn't find anything on it at all. Yeah. At all. Not even in, like, the overview on Wikipedia. I think it's, like, a drone that has a poison that can, like, dissolve them. Oh, my God, dude. There's Food Fight, the movie fandom. (laughs) Um Exobites are the main air force for brand X. They are mostly in charge of... They're the little, like, flying things. The right. black flying things. Okay. They are mostly in charge of Overwatch and Icon assassination. <laughs> Standing from 13 to 15 meters, these sentient wasps are colossal. Holy fuck. Wow. Exobites were some of Lady X's most devious inventions. <laughs> so, yeah, remember that bit where Daredevil Dan is flying his plane? Yeah. And, like, he's flying it towards them and then leading them around. And By the way, Daredevil Dan is a squirrel who has the big cheeks but the thing i noticed like halfway through is that his his puffy cheeks because they they're not actually round because it's it's rendered like too thin which means when you look at him from the side he doesn't look like he has big bulgy cheeks it looks like he has like fleshy chitinous plates yeah yeah for a face well you know what they say about a squirrel with big cheeks uh, he's you so know what you gross. say about a squirrel that has big plates <laughs> <laughs> he's such a gross character there's literally a bit where he is I've, I've written this down as a quote as well because i wanted to bring it up there's a bit where dev double down in a kid's film is yeah. flying his plane cat calling women yeah. and what he says to them is quote hey how about some chocolate frosting I'd like ah. to butter your muffin. Ah. And then there's a bit later where Lady X is leaving with Daredevil Dan and she goes, what can I say? Chicks dig chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that bit. Yeah. Well, this movie is obsessed. Like every line, it, it's like the goal for every line was to be a pun. Yeah. It's like they wrote 500 puns and then played connect the dots with it <laughs> to write a story. My least favorite, I wrote two of them down. I wrote a few of them down. One of them, Requiem for a Whipped Cream. Oh, God. Which is nothing. God. The frequently featured Kung Tofu. Yeah, Kung Tofu, who was, by the way, voiced by a Scottish man. Yes. One of the many very racist ethnic stereotypes. Yeah. Um, there was this one was one of the only moments instead of cackling, I did groan. Nobody puts polar in the freezer, which I'm pretty <laughs> sure so is stupid. nobody puts baby in the it corner. Be. It must be. It must be. But that's it's such a stretch. Such a weird one. He's also not put in a freezer. He's just been hit in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and then right towards the end, frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam. There's a lot of Casablanca so references. There is. Oh, my God. Do you want to know why? Why? Lawrence Kasanoff promoted the film by saying it would be his studio's Casablanca. <laughs> Hence why there's so many clear references and quotations oh, in the movie. He thought he was being cute and clever yeah. and he wasn't. He, he really <laughs> thought it would be astounding. He really had a lot of faith in it. Yeah. I just love that again. Like I keep thinking, well, you know, it did. It was meant to come out 10 years prior. And it's like, no, after seeing that trailer, it was always terrible. It was always going to be strange. Like yeah. if you watch that in 2001, again, Toy Story is the benchmark that they set six years prior. Yeah. It looked so polished and so refined. And that is just a chaotic, it's, vivid it, mess. It's also, it's not like the, it's just the interior of the shots that are bad. 
the actual like camera work oh, is it's awful. Crazy. There's a lot he of he loves like, to swivel. He, he loves, loves to circle a the weird, camera around. Just like <laughs> sudden jerky movement swirled around. Oh, he loves cut it. To, off center mid shots. Yeah. <laughs> are frequently like crossing the line as well. So you lose all sense of space oh and everything. Oh, God. I will, I will never, I can't believe that the guy who w- would have watched a render of when the data, strange data figurine in like this odd wide shot from far away goes sending now but while they say sending now is does like three backflips and then a pirouette they love the no flips reason. they love the flips <laughs> also god it's weird like i just can't get over sunshine as a character uh, yeah Her, like lo- like little blonde hair and the cat ears it's just a furry's paradise it is this it's, whole film it's just a human woman <laughs> with a, a, they're not furry cat ears they're fleshy <laughs> they're so fleshy yeah. they're just skin <laughs> i mean i guess you know, ears are. Why couldn't they just extend her hair over the ears a little bit? Make yeah. it just little blonde fur. Yeah, I could. I could handle that more. I could. I mean, it's still weird that it's like her and then the one other person that looks like like Lady X that looks like a person. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, those are the only people icons. Yeah. Which also, every single moment that she's gone, they're trying so hard to make a line about her. The "You Are My Sunshine" mm. song. Yeah. Every. <laughs> oh wait. There's the scene where he's even playing You Are My Sunshine in a minor key. Yeah. <laughs> like, as if The Cure had played it. By the way, when the film started, before I realized that she was a raisin mascot, I oh, could understand yeah. why what? Dexter pulls out, because that's what it, she is. She's a sunshine goodness, is right. a brand of raisins. Okay. And that's why Dexter is obsessed with raisins, and why in the first right. in the first scene where he takes down a rat and a bunch of, like, ne- hairless guinea pigs on top of a balloon. Yeah. yeah that's what we're working with, guys. <laughs> After he takes them down, he like, or in the process of it, he like flicks a raisin up. He says something about yeah. how like he only takes he only takes raisins or something, and then he <laughs> oh, it's eats gibberish. It. Like- yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and I was like, why is he obsessed with raisins? And then she runs over to him, and I'm still again unaware that she is the raisin girl because we're not fucking American. She runs over to him and she goes, "Oh, Dexter, it warms my heart how much you love my raisins." And I was like, "Her raisins? Yeah. What the fuck?" Well, there's no way you can get me to believe that the real sunshine raisins mascot is a human woman with cat ears i think it might be just a cat look let's look it up if it's a cat i'm gonna fucking lose it i'm gonna go (laughs) absolutely berserk if it's a woman i'm gonna fucking lose it because where did they get off making her half cat half human dex dog detective is a full dog that just stands upright and then a cat gets turned into a human woman i'm gonna fucking lose it let's let's find out what is this based on Maybe it's just a made-up brand. Yeah. In the, in the original trailer we watched, it looked like there was the Cheetos mascot, the cheetah. And he wasn't in the final He's film. He's not in the final movie. No. Cheetos pulled out. Cheetos he- was like, we're above this. <laughs> Sunshine goodness raisins. I don't know. There, there is a brand of raisins called Sunmade. Yeah. So it's just a pun then, right? It must be. I guess they couldn't get copyright to Sunmade. But she's yeah. not a cat. It's a woman. It's just a woman. She's also brunette. <laughs> What's going on? It sounds so weird. <laughs> so weird. What the fuck? So they made it up. Because he was like saying that like one of the obstacles the director was talking about was like being like, oh, people internationally won't understand these references. Correct. We don't. Yeah, 100%. And he was like, you know, what we could do, his initial idea was that for international release, he would change and reanimate a bunch of no. icons, Ikes, to be global foods that people could recognize so no. he wanted a different copy of the film for every country no no no, no fucking no, no, crazy no, no. he's no, a crazy no. guy yeah he's a everything i read about oh him was God. he had great intentions but had no idea what the fuck he was doing yeah this, this was is... the first thing he directed yeah of course it is yeah That's, you didn't need to tell me that and he'd never animated this before. is someone who wants to apply to film school got given a budget to make a movie yeah <laughs> like this is fully unhinged of the brand x there was the two different guys were in the big generals there was like the german short guy yeah that and then was there jerry was, stiller that was jerry stiller and then there was the guy who looked like a lizard who every time he spoke the whole movie would grind to a halt as he went ah ah and usually ah. T- was he at one point was like more fun than a spanking Oh, yeah. There's so much sexual innuendo in this. I'm pretty sure he dies by being like, ah, I didn't he go like, I pissed myself and I liked it. <laughs> did he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. <laughs> the guy that voiced that character, I had to look it up as well because I thought he sounded familiar. But when I looked him up, I was like, oh, he's not familiar, at least for me. But that was Lieutenant X. So Jerry right. Stiller was the short one who was General X. Yes. The taller one that looked like a lizard was Lieutenant X. 
And the guy that voiced him was Jeffrey Bennett. Okay. Jeff Bennett. He voiced... He was Kowalski in the Penguins of Madagascar series. Oh, um, right. I don't know. I can't remember the voice of Kowalski, but I remember he's the one that the lead guy always goes, Kowalski. And that's like becomes the joke is to just say Kowalski. I think he's just done a lot of voice acting. He was in The Lion King doing the singing voice for Zazu. Oh, that's cool. Um, he was oh, in he does Mortal a really good... Kombat. Wait, ah! he, does, he does a really good Rowan Atkinson impression then because I thought it was Rowan Atkinson singing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, but he can't, he does a I don't great think job. Rowan Atkinson can sing. That makes sense. Yeah, he was like one of Frollo's so soldiers in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. He's just been in a bunch of Disney and Pixar that things. That makes me disappointed though because some of the others, I, I get it. Like I never would in my life hire hillary duff for her voice acting talent but uh, but then this guy can do it and, and he did not... a good voice no hey. in this one he's going ah uh, i enjoyed wow. it wow it's I loved nothing it. though i loved it <laughs> it's it's absolutely nothing what's leroy and stitch oh that was like a, a made for tv sequel oh uh, okay yeah he was dr jacques von hammersteville in it Oh, okay. Yeah, and he was an Enchanted as well. So he's one of the ones I should know the name of. You know, he's at that, like, Tara Strong, James Arnold Taylor. Like, you find out they're the voice of, like, fucking everything. Well, remember, as I said previously in an episode, uh, I don't respect voice actors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did say that. <laughs> I'm glad you took the opportunity to... <laughs> to really double down. To, to really it. say it again. Yeah, yeah. Also, Mrs. Butterworth was voiced by Eddie M- Edie McClurg. And Edie McClurg was the receptionist from Ferris Bueller's being like, Ed. Oh, yeah. Ed. Yeah, yeah. She was also in planes, trains, and automobiles. She was. Go fuck yourself. Oh, no, yeah. She's like, I guess it means you're fucked. Yeah. 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 Good. She's She's funny. She's good. She's good. I mean, everyone is above this. Even Ed- Kasanov is above this. The cast <laughs> is good. So that's what's so frustrating and strange about this whole thing is that it has A-listers and lots of good B-listers and lots of good voice actors. Yeah. Despite the fact that I don't respect them. I guess um, the A-listers would have been at the time, well, when it was produced, Charlie Sheen and uh, Chris Lloyd and arguably Hilary Duff if it was 2002. Well, I know that Charlie Sheen is past his prime now, obviously. Well, yeah. But he's still to me an A-lister. Like everyone knows his name. He's got so many memorable fair, moments actually. in time. He's had so many scandalous things occur to him. Like, I think he's still an A-lister. And I think Hillary Duff is still an A-lister. I don't think Wayne Brady is an A-lister. <laughs> uh, Wayne Brady's not an A-lister. Hillary Duff he's is great like, though, but... She's got like wholesome vibes. She came out of Disney okay, and that's shocking. Yeah. Yeah, she seems... That's crazy. I, I, I'm, she's the kind where I'm like, look, I, I kind of don't enjoy much of what you're in, but I... I wish you the best. No, I liked her in Cadet Kelly. That movie I watched a lot as a kid. I really liked what it. What about Raise Your Voice? Obviously, bitch. I liked Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, who doesn't in the Lizzie yeah. McGuire movie? Yeah. What are you fucking saying? What are you saying right now? I was like, this I don't is pretty neat in that one episode of Community. I don't want to hear anything against Hillary Duff. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah, you were. I'm proving Just myself wrong. It. Just drop it. It's I'm actually a sore point. A <laughs> sore huge spot woman, and I can admit when I'm wrong. That's why I respect voice actors. <laughs> I just, I don't want you to get online hate for what you've just said. So. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just rain it back. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, our, our heavenly Duff, uh, <laughs> Hillary be thy name. Lizzie be thy name. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that's good too, yeah. I want to say before, like, before we potentially move into anything else. Yeah. I'm just, I can't, I cannot believe that, the, like, the last moment in the movie is we finally see their wedding and then he, you know, steps on a on a glass and they all go mazel tov. Yeah. yeah. Because then the last moment in the movie is literally them, like, three of the ancillary characters expressing, like, going, huh, he's Jewish. And then, like, the Kung Tofu doing a, an accent I'm not going to replicate being like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. And that's the that's the last moment in the mov- movie is going, huh, and he was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so in another weird. film that could fly. I feel like that'd be I don't know, but in this film, that none of the none of the jokes no, make sense. Or you pay know off. who could have made that joke funny? Mel Brooks. Yeah. Do you want to hear some trivia? I, oh, more than anything in the world. <laughs> so Lawrence Kasanoff, I fucking I'm obsessed with how terrible he was as a director. According to comments made by animators, writer and director Lawrence Kasanoff didn't seem to realize the difference between live action and animation. What? He would often ask his crew to do retakes of scenes. He would also ask the animators to make things more awesome or 30% better. (laughs) (laughs) Although he was eventually fired. Oh. 
Uh, it has been said that the studio lost millions of dollars due to his inability to streamline production. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I'm saying all oh, because we've built up him as like almost like a like a um, like a Forrest Gump type, someone someone who doesn't who just never had the capacity but has been put in this position. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is endearing and it makes me sad that he's fired. But obviously, like, if I was the studio, I'd be like, no, he cannot stay. Yeah. <laughs> I think what happened is, job. you know how I said that the script got auctioned off in like 2011? Yeah. I think that was right after he got fired. It's because the thing that I had heard but I didn't know about was like, wasn't it like the the studio like was shut down and then they restarted it in like 2011. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. why it's unfinished is they just didn't finish it. And they were like, I, we'll Basically, release it. They were like, we can't, we, I think they had someone like come in to review it and try and polish it. But then they were like, let's just get it out. <laughs> well, that would have been like an insurance guy who yeah. went like, yep, we can release that. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone went, no. Apparently many animators refuse to list this film on their resumes. <laughs> yeah. Alan Smithy on mass. <laughs> And actually, because I've actually used so much of my trivia already, just because I had to, here's the last piece of trivia for you. The creators intended to animate the film in a very cartoonish squash and stretch style. Mm -hmm. After the hard drives containing the unfinished film were stolen, (laughs) they decided to complete the film using motion capture. The very primitive method used in the film resulted in a noticeable, noticeably choppy animation and left many characters with extremely limited facial expressions and barely emoting eyes. <laughs> yeah. Notably, I, I realized during the first act is that when they have to move their faces, all of the features move separately. Yeah. Which, which gives the impression that they're like a puppet of some kind mm. because it'll be like turn and then eyebrows raise and then smile happens that I there's just, like a doll. I've researched this film and I still can't piece together what was made from where and how. Like I'm <laughs> like, is that squash and stretch or is that motion capture? How could that be motion capture? Like it's just, it's incomprehensible to look at the film and be like, how is that created? You'll yeah. never know. Yeah, it's You'll a never, mishmash of because, two different methods. Because, like, like I said, you can't tell me that it, any of it is mocapped because the human body doesn't move that way. Yeah, but it's also not but squash and stretch because it was mocapped. But but then they had to have done something because they got people in. They rigged them up. That's what that guy was doing: putting skins on models to Were be they able to motion encased capture. in stone and shoved around <laughs> like. They just weren't good methods. Like it wasn't, and he. This is what the person on Reddit said as well. They were like, "It's not that we weren't talented or skilled. It's just that we had nothing to work oh, with fully. because the guy didn't know what he was doing." I a hundred percent believe <laughs> that like the the grunts working on this knew how to do their job. Yeah, but like that is the thing of and why film is partly industrialized is like you you actually can't make a good product even if you're skilled if the like uh, pipeline gets clogged up yeah. in a specific way. Yeah. And, yeah. and the guy truly just didn't know how to animate a film. He no. didn't understand. Yeah. He butchered it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, 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 it, I, it, it's just so unbelievable the manner in which <laughs> it doesn't work. I can't Especially, believe he was there being like, can you make this 30% more awesome? <laughs> it's great, but I think it just needs to be more awesome. <laughs> <laughs> more awesome. Just make that scene more awesome. No, no, no. Again, like he's watching the rough cut. He's watching the animator throw up. He looks behind him and again, like anime style sunglasses, just reflection smoking in the corner. Yeah, I think it just needs to be more, more awesome, awesome is what uh, it is. Make it 30, 30% percent more we'll Make it, it 40% it. more better. <laughs> Do you want to hear some goofs? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> During the food fight, the ketchup bottles are hit at the base to release extra ketchup, despite being squeezy bottles, which by design <laughs> don't need to be handled as such. <laughs> That's the joke. It's one of the only jokes that I think lands. It's not a good joke, but it, it makes sense. <laughs> God damn it. In the beginning, Dex and Sunshine sit down for a fancy dinner. The table is covered with grapes, a carton of milk, and ice cream with fudge topping. Dex eats raisins and drinks milk throughout the film. None of those foods are good for dogs. <laughs> raisins and chocolate can be fatal. Raisins are also fatal to cats. And sunshine is a cat-human hybrid. Actually, you know what? They're right. Because why did they make those two animals raisins? Yeah, yeah. Also, that, I mean, what we left out there, I realize, is that milk is the stand-in for whiskey because there's... It is. They're, like, getting it at the Copacabana. He, but it's the dialogue is, like, got milk? Yeah. You're hitting the hard stuff too much. And he's like, it does a body good. Yeah. And then he's drunk and you're like, shut up. Yeah, we shut get up. it. I loved this because it was just incomprehensible. 
Most of the characters' movements were very rushed and didn't take much effort, as there are a lot of very jarring to watch movements that the characters do. <laughs> Insightful. I, I'm so glad we added this segment. <laughs> and here's my last goof. When the watermelon hits Dan, it produces a bright green splat. Watermelon is red on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, you know what? Sure. Well, to be fair, but it it's so funny. What makes that weirdly written is that they're pointing at that one splat because every splat or impact in the entire like war zone sequence in the end is either like molten lava of any color or clearly real life footage of smoke. Yeah. It's like a dust explosion superimposed with a color filter on it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll it'll be a glob of ketchup hitting a building and then it'll be white smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like the one fun bit of the film was the tanks rolling up and it being ketchup yeah. bottles. I was like, fun. So like, that, that's fun. That's a fun idea. Cas- it just Kazanov needed to do a short of this. And yeah. It needed to be like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to hear some reviews? Yes, please. So, since it's released, Food Fight has been heavily panned by critics and is considered one of the worst films ever made. A 2012 review by Kate Valentine of Hollywood News called it by far the crappiest piece of crap I have ever had the misfortune (laughs) to watch. An article from New York Times was similarly scathing, saying, The animation appears unfinished and the plot is impenetrable and even offensive. (laughs) Um... Describing the film as one of those fall of civilization moments, Nathan Rabin. (laughs) Food fight is the end of American empire. (laughs) It's the death of art. Nathan Rabin of the AV Club wrote in 2013 that the grotesque ugliness of the animation alone would be a deal breaker, even if the film weren't also glaringly inappropriate in its sexuality, nightmare inducing in its animation and filled with Nazi overtones and iconography, even more unfit for children than the script's wall-to-wall gauntlet of crude double entendres and weird intimations of interspecies sex. (laughs) He had a lot to say. (laughs) And I also loved what Tom Nicholson from Esquire wrote. He said... This film was The Room, but rendered in horribly sharp polygons. Yes. (laughs) This is a... So I didn't use any of the 10 out of 10 reviews from IMDb because they were all really ironic being like, this is a masterpiece, blah, blah, blah. It's not fun. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, if you're... Yeah. What I found was that there were three reviews in the 9 out of 10 section and then zero reviews in 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10. (laughs) And then everything resumed from like 3, 2, 1. Like that's that's, where all the reviews were lying. That's why it's so low. Yeah. (laughs) But I did find two good reviews. So 9 out of 10 review left by Tess Wisco in February 2019. And she said, I'm seriously disappointed in the reviews this movie is getting. Yes, the cartooning wasn't the best, but you have to think, it wasn't that bad for the time. I thought this was a fun, good-natured, wholesome, family-oriented movie, which is probably why it got such bad bad ratings. People want nasty, (laughs) dirty foulness, even in their cartoons. I bet if I check Sausage Party, it will have a great rating, even though it wasn't good cartooning either. The plot was ridiculous, and it was just foul. Long story short, when I want to feel good about the world, I watch this movie and laugh and feel good. (laughs) That's insane, Tess. Go see a therapist. (laughs) Tess watches Food Fight instead of Therapy. <laughs> and this is a, another 9 out of 10 review uh, by left by Jay Slob. And the title of it was, It is not a bad movie. Uh-huh. It is not really a bad movie if you just need to review itself. Because look, what? the sexuality is showing the Whoa, incoming what? adults, all of you, need to st- quit thinking that because I know it only paid $75,000. But I do not care. Me and my cousins will watch this and I think I would get other up Indians. Just shut up about your op Indians. And the movie has yours favorite actors and get the movie and they remade the quotes, but they try to make it where kids will not what? get offended all the time. But maybe is a bad movie, but I think it is. And a good movie. It's just the CGI animation. I, are just like unofficial movies that came from Netflix and all that. Nine out of ten. I, they, I, that guy's having a stroke or something. <laughs> it's going through an episode of some sort. <laughs> Like, I, like <laughs> thinks he's leaving a review for like fucking Iron Man three or something, and it's this just is a having cry for an help. episode. <laughs> this is absolutely a cry for help. Yeah, <laughs> this is an SOS message. <laughs> yeah. Call an ambulance for J Slob. <laughs> well, that was J Slob's review, Michelle. Oh, what was oh. your review of Food Fight? I I don't know how I'd begin to like 
think of this movie in numerically it belies numbers this is the movie equivalent of like terrence howard declaring that he invented new math how like, can you quantify yeah, the experience of watching this film it's not any it's, it's like impossible one to ten it's it's blurple like it's not <laughs> <laughs> it, it isn't on the scale the scale of zero to ten is for movies only <laughs> This this isn't this that. defies this is, what we think of as a movie. This is a a, a campfire folk tale. You say to scare children, <laughs> to scare young trip. animators as they're learning. <laughs> <laughs> you you show it to them in class to go look at the horrors of when you don't set up your projects properly. This or is something. what happens if you don't use condoms, kids. <laughs> yeah, this is this is. It reminds me of the recently on Twitter. There's been a, a particularly one guy, but a bunch of conservatives <laughs> arguing that it's okay to take your kids to Hooters. I saw that. Yeah. And he was like, I love Hooters. Me and my boys love Hooters. Here's a photo of me at Hooters. This is an alpha male at Hooters. This is if that guy got $65 million to make a movie. Yeah. (laughs) It's, again, it's not a movie. It's nothing out of 10. It's definitely not a kid's film. (laughs) It's not a kid's film. Are we allowed to, like, forego the rating? Just be like, nah. It's not a human film. It's for human cat hybrids. Question mark out of 10. It's for fleshy, vacant cat sex women i agree with that <laughs> the, question mark out of 10 question mark out of 10 i love that uh but in uh, to paraphrase a 30 rock joke zero out of tens will go we count those <laughs> mm. you know mm. but it but it's not a true zero it's nothing it's nothing <laughs> it's, it's it's not discounted a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's discounted. Yeah. It's not in the bargain bin. It's the muck underneath the DVD bargain bin. We forfeit this vote. <laughs> this movie is disqualified. With the caveat that I think I actually got as much joy out of watching and talking about it as when I saw Glass Onion. But that's because <laughs> I'm deeply hurt as a person. <laughs> There's something Two wrong with me. Two different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when like you, you know, someone smacks you and it like hurts, but you're also aroused at the same time. Yeah. Oh, you don't get that? <laughs> what? And yeah, so I enjoyed this because I'm a little feral goblin who likes smearing shit on the walls. Like, that's not a recommendation to watch it for human beings. Well, it looks great. The decor in this house is... <laughs> yeah. Brown is in at the moment. Ah, ah. People are loving those warm, earthy tones. And yet, though that, though, that joke, better than any single joke <laughs> in this. The jokes of this movie are the energy of when you're in, like, a group of people and the guy you don't know, like, it says, nobody puts polar in the freezer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Oh. <laughs> this is the movie equivalent of that energy. It's so, it's, it's so ju- I just want it to shut the fuck <laughs> up. Well, yeah, no, I forfeit my vote as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, question mark out of 10. But for but that's not a zero. Zeros are counted. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's counted as zero. <laughs> but uh, if you could put it below the scale, that's yeah, where it goes. Yeah, just off the scale. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, that was that. Guys, hi. It's me, your your estranged mother. Whoa! Asking you to please return my calls. I know I fucked up. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> Just please get back to me. <laughs> Just want to hear your voice. <laughs> want to say I'm sorry. And we'll also- cut this segment and put it as an ad for the, the whole <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but also, don't forget to uh, follow us on social media. Yeah. You can find us on. Twitter under Rate Descend Pod. You can find us on TikTok under Rating Descending, or you can email us at ratingdescending at gmail.com. And if you like the little feral goblin energy, then you can find more of that with me on Twitter and Instagram for as long as Twitter still exists. And if you like that Michelle.St. Clair. Buxom blonde flawless energy, um, you can find me on Abigail J. Ward at Twitter. Christ. Wait, and Instagram, not Twitter. It's just, it's so accurate that I'm just so impressed and wowed. <laughs> It's uh, my flawless nature. Yeah, and if you're overwhelmed by the energy of that buxom blonde V <laughs> feral goblin, then you can go, holy shit, I have to leave a review. It's And it's five out of five on, uh, what, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, it yeah, really don't helps. cop out and give us a question mark out of 10, all right? Yeah, it's don't, bullshit. Don't cop that. I mean, don't you can that. leave it in the written bit, just five <laughs> out of five and then a question mark. That's fine. I'd We're laugh. Fine with that. I'd give a giggle. Yeah. I'd chuck. Just a tiny chuck. This... This whole podcast is just like us fluctuating between us getting the 
biggest joy out of something like this and then times like spookums in april where it's us the joy is in, for the audience is instead us going through the absolute misery of we're it we're in the pit of despair but we're <laughs> we're holding hands and walking through it together that's it, what this podcast is it's rare that there is an emotional middle ground here yeah except for yogi bear maybe Despite this being a question mark out of 10, it was an oddly nourishing episode. Oh, I feel so much better than I did when the day began. (laughs) (laughs) It took away all of my negative thoughts and all of the hurt that I was carrying with me. It took it away. I'm floating on cloud nine, baby. 100%. Well, Michelle, that was Food Fight. What are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching Devil's Dew. Well, I guess for American listeners, Devil's Dew. Yeah. Devil's (sighs) Dew. It doesn't... No, no, they just say Dew, right? Dew. It's the Dew Day. The doo-doo. Devil's doo-doo. Devil's... <laughs> <laughs>